Shall we get started? Yep, it's time. Cool, so welcome to the next Network Service Mesh meeting. So before we get started, if you have anything to put onto the agenda, uh, please uh, bring it up or add it on and, um, and we'll see about, uh, uh, about getting to it. Also, please add yourself to the attendees list. So the attendees list is really useful because when we go and do outreach, it makes it very easy for us to say that we have a community there that uh, people who are involved that's diverse. So if you're able to, please add yourself to the attendees list. The meeting notes have been posted onto the chat, so uh, feel free to open them there. And with that, let's go ahead and uh, get started with the main agenda. So we have three recurring meetings. Um, we have this meeting every Tuesday at this time, the NSM DOC meeting, which occurs every Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific time, and the NSM use case, which occurs every second, fourth, and fifth at 8 a.m. Pacific time as well. There will be a use case meeting this coming um, this coming uh, Monday. So uh, mark your calendars for that. We also participate in the CNCF Telecom User Group, which occurs every first and third Monday at 8 a.m., which rotates with the use case. We have Shanghai uh, KubeCon China coming up in Shanghai. And Nikolai and I will be giving an intro maintainer track. There is a CNCF answer bar that will also be on. Um, I, I suppose somebody will be um, manning it from NSM from 1130 to 12. That's me. Cool. And we have a uh, tug birds of a feather kickoff, which is going to occur on Tuesday from 11 to 11.35. Actually, that, that time seems short. Uh, we should double check that because the last one was an hour and a half and this one's showing only half an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really short. That's, um, yeah. Okay. And 10 minutes after that is our talk. So, so, so if you are going to be in Shanghai, come visit us. Um, we also have uh, DBDK user space in Bordeaux, France. I've submitted a call for paper discussing NSM plus DBDK integration. The uh, notifications for them should come out sometime this week, perhaps. So we'll, we'll see. These things sometimes run a bit late. Um, we have a new, so we have something called Open Core Summit. Uh, can someone discuss Open Core Summit? I haven't heard of this one. Uh, if someone's discussing it, you're on mute. Uh, I am not super familiar with it. We got a direct message on Twitter from Open Core Summit saying, hey, it would be great to see you there. So there's, um, I guess you're welcome to learn more on Twitter at Open Core Summit. Cool. So. Um, in my scenario, the main problem is it's probably going to well, it is during the same time as DPDK, DPDK user space. But um, yeah, well, let's take a look at it and see if, if there's uh, any possibility we can get someone to uh, to attend. Yeah, do we know where it is? San Francisco. That makes it much easier. <laughs> that definitely makes it much easier. So we have uh, ONS Europe coming up and the call for paper for that is closed. And I believe the, um, the uh, submission should either come out, I think the end of this month or early next month in terms of the, in terms of the, the selected schedule. That will be held in Antwerp. We have 
ONS Europe coming up, of which the call for paper closes on July 1st. And I believe Nikolai is applying for a talk there. Um, yes, I will do. Probably head out of Ivana also. We'll see what we'll figure out. There's still some time. So, um, yeah. So for ONS, actually, yeah, we submitted uh, me and Taylor and then also uh, with you, Frederick, <laughs> as you probably know. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. I mean, maybe we want to track this and see. Yeah. So I put in, uh, I put in a talk on crafting a CNF. Yeah. I hope that that one will be, will be accepted. It will be surely nice to share our experience and probably get some feedback from what other people think on this and how they see this moving. Cool. Yeah. And not just crafting a CNF, but crafting, crafting it with best practices. So, um, yeah, so we have so we have three other talks then. The test bed with Taylor, the kernel forwarder, and a possible SMI plus NSM integration. Cool. So in terms of uh, we have KubeCon uh, call for papers coming up. Uh, that closes on July 12th. So we need to get a shared document and start gathering ideas. So uh, the KubeCon ones tend to give us a lot of mileage. And so if you could only attend one, uh, that would be, the KubeCon would be uh, high up on that list, if not at the top. Um, we have also, there'll be co-located events. We know that there's uh, EnvoyCon will be, uh, will be there as well. Uh, I intend to put something forward on Envoy uh, in that particular talk or in that particular co-located event. Uh, and I'm pretty sure there'll be, there'll be a range of others that we can participate in. Um, December 10th and 11th, we have Edge Computing World um, coming up in Mountain View. Uh, the website is still to be, uh, to be announced. Um, and we also have Edge Congress. Uh, Prem, I think I saw you on. Can you tell us about Edge Congress? Yeah, I just uh, got this mail from them saying that uh, this is most closely focused on Edge. So uh, that's where I posted the program also. It seems to be relevant uh, more from the Edge computing perspective. Uh, they are open for proposals. Uh, probably we should submit a proposal Cool. So with that, if we have any, um, any events that have been confirmed, please add them to the website with a pull request. We had, so onto the social media community team. So uh, Lucinda, you have the floor. Good morning. Great. Uh, we had a nice post from VMware Open Source yesterday, uh, so I linked to that there. And in the last week, 15 more accounts followed and Service Mesh. We followed 61 more accounts and posted 23 times. I uh, posted about the Cisco Live event, the KubeCon China, Save the Date, and um, some CNCF events as well. So we already talked about the Open Core Summit DM. There's also a mention question from someone. And I believe Frederick may have responded and continued on the conversation about that. No. So that's there if anyone would like to continue the conversation. Oh, I haven't seen this one yet. Ooh, I hadn't either. This is cool. Thank you so much for bringing it to our attention. Sure, you're welcome. So that's linked here in the notes. and. There's, I also noticed a call for demos in the Kubernetes community meetings. Those are held every Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. I believe they have things on their calendar, maybe through to June, maybe mid-July. So if there's, um, if you'd like to do a demo, there's a link here for the Kubernetes community. So uh, I was uh, directed here also because I reached out for this, um... What was the name of the event that we wanted to do? 
the webinar. Yeah. So essentially, uh, I think it was Chris uh, telling, uh, answering me that uh, uh, because we are a sandbox project, we are not uh, supported for a webinar as a project. We can do it from the company perspective, uh, like uh, VMware or Cisco, or you know, some of the companies that are participating there. Uh, and they were essentially saying, uh, if you want to do something, you can. I think that that uh, every one of the maintainers should be there on that thread. You can do um, this um, community meeting uh, demos or something like this. So, yeah, <clears throat> it's a thing. That's <laughs> that was the point. Uh, that makes sense. So we'll just we'll just have to uh, make our own webinars in the in the meantime. Great. And last week we reviewed the OVS Orbit podcast with a interest in giving an interview. Are there any updates on this possible event? We have a scheduled uh, interview with uh, Ben interviewing uh, Nikolai and I about network service mesh. Uh, it's going to be 2nd of July, right? I believe so, but I, I don't think he'll release it immediately. I think he's trying to build up content so he could release it yeah. over the summer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so this is where the recording should happen. Fingers crossed. And then, yeah. Well, that's great. Congratulations on getting on the schedule. Hmm. Thank you. So, and the, on the webinar, just uh, to share my experience with the service desk, everything went really smooth, really quick. Uh, I mean, like in an hour, it was clear that, yeah. I mean, there were a couple of people involved sending uh, responses back and forth, and in the end, it was clear what, what we should do. So, just to share that. If we need it, uh, it works really well, the service desk, I mean. Great. Is there anything more on that, or should we jump straight into the uh, code of conduct? I think that's all from my side. Yeah, on my side too. Regarding the webinar. Great. So a couple of weeks ago, we uh, brought up the code of conduct. So um, have uh, people had a chance to review it, or were there any major issues that popped up in, in people's mind? Um, this is, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I looked at it before the meeting last week and was pretty happy with the CNCF code of conduct, but I wanted to make sure that other people had a chance to see if there were any things that they thought we should do differently. And we did get, did we get a ping back from Mishi with it? Um, saying that, that, you know, from letting her know that, that we would be another, another group of people she would be mediating for? Yeah, I, I think she, I think at the initial request, she was a little bit confused because she may have thought we were actually asking for services. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> they can't be confusing when suddenly people don't want anything immediately from you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> especially, especially in this area. So, uh, we, so we've, we've notified Michi that we were, uh, that we're considering uh, Put, adding it on and so she wanted to know as well if there's any problems uh, with um, with the wording or anything like that as well because the the wording can be changed or, or clarified as well so if there's any if there's any problems with the code of conduct that we flag uh, they are there are something we can bring up with them or bring up with Michi so Cool. Shall we go ahead and do this then? Um, it's, yeah, I'm. I'm up for. Uh, I, I'm up for for adding it in. Is uh, are there any? 
how do we want to do this? Do we do what? Should we do a vote? Do we? Um, so I do have one to ask if you, before we merge it, if we can remove the, the work in progress from, from the, the PR, that would be great. Yes. Yeah. Sure. I, I, my I ask is to, to, to have the formal approvals of uh, uh, everyone on the maintainers list. So, okay. No. Um, I, I approve. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have the, like, you have to submit the PR. I mean, like. Ah, I see. Oh, hang on. That, I see your point. Yes. But there's actually a button for it. Yeah. <laughs> We've done the exactly. formal approval now uh, with the button and everything. Um, one other thing I will suggest to folks look into um, uh, with, the, with the work in progress tag, there is actually a new GitHub feature called draft that will let you push a pull release in a draft mode, which literally precludes it being merged until you click the publish button. Yeah. Um, and, and that I'm finding to be super cool um, because I, I'm working in other places where sometimes people are super happy to merge the thing you pushed. And it's like, no, stop, stop, not yet. All right, so we need one more then. Um, um, Andre, can you, um, Add your approval or rejection. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let me check. Yeah. Don't let us bully you into something as well. If there's something that you don't like about it, you know, definitely. And I will change the work in progress right now. So I'm not able to uh, to vote on my own pull request. So I'm going to add uh, I'm going to add a comment on it, showing my approval. So while we're waiting for that last approval, uh, let's go ahead and jump into the uh, to the next topic. So we'll come back to this. Yeah. Can you um, click on the backlog? Just yep. to see. Nikolai has the floor. Um. Okay. So uh, the. The situation here uh, in the on the release hasn't changed that much since last week, except for um, we now have the two Docker Hub um, uh, repos where we can push different images, um, and uh, I guess that it's going to be a manual process for now, like publishing the Docker images for the release. Um, I can really just tag and. Uh, so I'm, I'm in the process right now, by the way, of that actually will actually use the network CI repo because right now uh, we do have the repo, but it's not being used. And I'm chasing down a few bugs on that PR. There's actually a link in the meeting agenda pointing to that outstanding action item. So once I've got that, so it will actually merge then we can merge it and merge it also to the branch. And then we'll start publishing to the network service mesh CI repo for the CI artifacts. And then from there, we can look at um, actually handling proper publishing the way we discussed for the main repo. And I think the things we discussed in the main repo was we would have things tagged as releases. We would have a latest tag that pointed to the latest release artifact we would have a master tag that points to the latest stuff coming off master. And then we would have for release throttle branches, you know, something like, you know, branch dash V 0.1 that points to the latest from that branch. That was my understanding of the last discussion. Um, that's what I'm trying to do in the PR. If I've gotten it wrong, just comment and we can get it fixed.
Hello? Can anyone hear me? I don't hear anyone. Yeah, we can. Uh, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah, but I, but but I was muted and talking to to the guitar. Okay, that, that's good. It was like suddenly, <laughs> suddenly I lost you with sentence, Nikolai. And, <laughs> but yeah, so like I said, I still need to beat on this a little bit. We don't necessarily need to redo this live if if people don't like the the, the tag choices I'm making uh -huh. until the discussion. Okay. Um, I, I will defend to the death the fact that it was a seeing choice. I will not defend that it is the right choice. Um, <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, it's a good, it's a good start in any, in any case. I mean, we need to, 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 to move this forward. We actually should have moved it much further by now, but... Okay, and this probably can also go into the release branch and should go there before we can do things. Okay. Yeah, um, better, better yeah. to get it slow and right rather than rushed and wrong. Oh, yeah, there's trade-offs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Indeed. Um, so the thing here was uh, AI format, okay, and the backlog. So on 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 the backlog, uh, things things are mostly frozen. So probably we need to. Why is this one fix? No, that's that's wrong. Um, uh, that's probably that's probably uh, auto tagging from. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, I I was uh, looking at some other projects. I don't remember which one, but people were having tags like uh, near release, next release, like more generic tags that actually you can uh, somehow. Uh, and this is a slight uh, how to say introduction to the next topic. Something that like you can reflect your roadmap in your issues. Like if you see what I mean, like. That, that, that's actually interesting. Um, it, it has the benefit that when that the stuff that you didn't actually get to um, that was scheduled to next release, if it doesn't get done next release, it's still next release. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, I, I kind of like that. It, it's, it's, it's very low, low effort in terms of going through issues. Um, so I, I, I do like that approach. Yeah. Um... I mean, uh, like we have a couple of things which are still pending from uh, zero point one, which are uh, obviously not getting there because the branch is there and we are not doing active development, and uh, we need to move them to the next release if we are planning for it, or we need to can kind of uh, put them in some categories, saying, okay, this is near future, this is distant future, and blah blah blah, something like that. Although, from what I can tell, most of the things that we have on our list, I mean, not 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 only here, but in general, you know, the issues should be more or less uh, near future. <laughs> uh, there are very few of the specs where uh, we are kind of discussing conceptual things which might be implemented somewhere down the road. But uh, yeah, as we as we were kind of discussing this. Uh, at where was the, the link here for the roadmap? I was expecting to be able to. Uh, there's, a, there's an attempt at the NSM technology tree. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And then there's the spec board because I don't think, I, I want to be super clear, the technology tree is probably not capturing everything yet. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and yeah. so if you're sitting there going, where is my spec? The answer is, um, please, speak up, complain. Let's get it worked in there. Right, because I, I know we've got lots of people doing lots of interesting things in the in the spec space about what we could go forward, and not everything has gotten as much love as I would like, um, because the world is full of shiny objects. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Um, one thing that actually I would I would love to wrap my head around a little more, and it sounds like from the talk proposal, Donna is looking at this is I, I've glanced at SMI, and I like a lot of what they're doing. I'm not sure how that relates to network service mesh. But I agree with the intuition that maybe somehow, and so you know, as, as Ivana get you know, as you get closer to sort of figuring out something that makes sense there, I would love to see a spec for that, um, just so we can get a sense of how we might you know dovetail into the bigger communities. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. Like I, I can I can see areas where they can potentially integrate with each other uh vertically but uh you may you may also have insights uh that because you're thinking more about it than than we have at this time so definitely definitely bring it up to us uh 
Uh, okay, so f- at least from the first glance, I mean, I'm speaking instead of Ivana here, but from the first glance, it sounds like it's a pretty early uh, development stage there. I don't know, Ivana, do you want to say something? Uh, yeah, from my review, I think uh, it's a worry that uh, they don't seem very open for interaction yet. Uh, they have one general Slack channel that it's not uh, pretty active. They don't have any meetings here, so issues opened from external people are with no comments and all requests are from the few people that started the project. So I think I, I even ha- had some ideas on where to start from if we want uh, some integration, but uh, I, at this uh, moment, I'm still not sure how we can interact well with the SMI community. I think we might need to wait a bit. Yeah, I mean, my, my, my general counsel would be probably patience. I've worked with tons and tons and tons of communities, including lots of communities in their initial stages. And starting a community is way harder than it looks. Um, and so usually when I see a community that's like the one you just described for SMI, it's literally less than a month out of the gate and it seems to be having trouble setting up for interaction. You just check back in a month. They're usually much better. Yeah, even the uh, the initial network service mesh meeting started off like that. Like it was me and Ed and a couple people hopping on as like, man, we need to get more people on here. <laughs> so, yeah, I think um, it's an important problem though. So, and uh, the people driving it are pretty high they do have some pretty high profile people on it. So I think they will, if they, if they keep up with it, I think they will build a community around it. Yeah, I still have concerns. It seems like uh, SMI will be uh, successful, at least from politics point of view, they are going to push for it. But uh, yeah, I think it's good to wait a bit. I'm continuing with the research. I may start trying some things, uh, but let's see how things are going to develop in that direction. I uh, find that East your people are not very interested yet, but it's still not sure maybe they will become interested in the near future. Yep, and then one of the things, I mean, one of the nice things with all these layer seven service meshes, is, you know, dovetailing with them is lovely, but, but due to the wonders of layer separation and networking, you can run the layer seven service mesh on top of network service mesh and they don't have to know. And, and so that, that, you know, and we don't have to really know that much either. There are a couple of places we could probably do some helpful things. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, I think it's excellent to continue reaching out, um, but I'm, I'm perfectly fine with whatever success we get in getting to respond. Uh, I even think that uh, the SMI people, even if it's your uh, contributors are not interested, I think that my contributors would make some integration or uh, even try to to run together with Istio to integrate it uh, on their own uh, in oh. order to say, uh, to be able to uh, provide the common API and not uh, to have it separated, having all the small meshes and excluding Istio. I think they are yeah, going they- to do that. Yeah, the two areas I, w- I would recommend looking at for an SMI integration at this point, um, and not, not even implementing, but even just like specking out and, and thinking about it, would be first one is uh, enablement, being able to, to add a service mesh by policy. And so we, we already have an Envoy uh, example, which can be used as a starting place for that. And if that Envoy were happen to be configured to work with the service mesh, then uh, that, will, that will get you an, an initial interaction. The second one as well is, uh, is around enabling uh, federated uh, communication and federated workloads. So think of like right now, a, a huge problem that many groups are trying to solve is like, how do you get cluster to cluster networking to, to work? And many of them are unfortunately going down the path of let's assign a one block of IP addresses to this to these this cluster and a second block of IP addresses to these clusters. That way they don't and that way they don't collide. And then we'll giant, turn them into a into a giant network with east west traffic between them. 
Uh, and rather than go through that, uh, perhaps a question would be, how do you connect workloads to workloads between, uh, between clusters using, using network service mesh, which could include an envoy or service mesh component in it? So those, those would be the two areas that, that I that I would recommend investigating, and I'm I'm sure there's there's others as well that uh, that you you may be able to think of. I have heard from some sources that uh, uh, the federation is not really a topic for the SMI. I mean, they want to keep this separated. I mean, I don't have any confirmation to that, but that's um, what I I've heard. So um, that actually brings a, a, an interesting uh, topic because um, mm, I don't know we don't have this uh, really on the ro roadmap and our actually our roadmap seems to be focused on very specific um, I don't know do domains or uh, points that we want to tackle and play with but um, do we want to put on the roadmap maybe in the distant future <laughs> but still. Um, kind of um, at least starting a discussion with, I don't know, fellow CNCF projects like Linkerd, or maybe not that fellow CNCF projects like uh, Istio, uh, some kind of underlying uh, integration and I don't know, verification and maybe maybe measures, I don't know, they all seem to be connected to all these technologies. Um, so what do people think about this? I, I, I think generally speaking, collaborating across pro various projects, whether in the CNCF or not, I, I know Istio is currently not a CNCF project, Yeah, um, is, is probably goodness. I, I know, for example, I've been talking a lot with the Spiffy Spire guys, and I don't think the Spiffy Spire guys are going to use network service mesh, but mm -hmm. they look like exactly the right tools for solving a lot of problems that we have. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so there's, there's a lot of good stuff going on there. Yeah, spiffy is really spiffy. Um, I think I think that um, yeah, that that's actually a really good example because when part of part of what we're going to have we're going to have to solve is how do you know who you're connecting to is actually who they say they are, and not just some intercepted or random thing. And spiffy and spire give us a uh, a path to that. But I mean, if we take our uh, multi-cluster, I don't remember where it is here, uh, maybe on the on the roadmap. Uh, so like floating in their domains or in general inter domain, uh, if we have this feature and we like enable uh, tr like traditional service mesh or let's say layer seven or application service mesh on top of uh, uh, network service mesh, then essentially for them it would be pretty transparent that there is kind of this inter-domain thing going on because NSM well, is going yeah, to- Yeah, exactly. From, from Istio's point of view, it's just the one domain, right? Because yeah. they're running on top of a network service, a network service of some kind. And the fact that it happens to touch dozens of clusters um, is completely invisible. I mean, do, do we think that, that this solves a really huge problem that they're trying to solve in like other ways? I know that console is doing some 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 pretty smart things regarding this, uh, but I'm not sure how how the other guys are doing. Yeah, if you if you step out of the service mesh uh, domain for a bit, uh, then you'll start to see some other types of activity. So uh, that. That's why I mentioned like like the joining of L two or L three domains is uh, is I, I know I know of, of a couple efforts where people our groups are trying to to perform that using various types of of uh, VPN strategies and so on and mm -hmm. I can tell I can tell you they've worked on those for well over well over a year and still haven't produced anything that uh, that's usable at this point and. When I talk with people in those areas, they're frustrated, and so uh, that interdomain problem is definitely a big problem, and it's definitely something that uh, uh, that when we get around to solving it, we can we can get a lot of mileage out of um, out of the interdomain because we'll we'll effectively uh, enable the um, the, uh, the federated multi-cluster, and not just federated multi-cluster, but across other uh, other devices and domains as well, 
but uh, we'll we'll solve it as part of that uh, as as part of that effort. And so uh, I'm I'm expecting to see uh, uh, not not a huge amount of stuff, but for but for people or companies who really need it, like they'll there'll definitely be a lot of excitement around it. I think that, that that we mentioned the last time that uh, essentially one of the steps that we need to take into the direction of uh, how to say maturing as a project and moving into from sandboxing to incubation is to really have some some okay as as production as possible uh, uh, deployments. I mean, even if someone deploys NSM in a CI, uh, that would still maybe considered as some kind of production type of thing for some people. But I mean, um, I'm looking at the, at the technology tree here and I'm trying to, to see what will, what is the shortest path to, to kind of attracting people, start, you know, de deploying it and using it. So um, we have, I, I, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. I, I, I think theater domain is the one that's going to be the big, the big bang. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because or inner domain and floating inner domain, because that allows people to break free of their cluster, right? Um, and that's huge. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and, and we've got lots of other people who are interested in other things, like the SP guys are going to be interested in hardware Nix and SROV, and they're going to be interested in SRV6, et cetera. But I think the broader enterprise world, like floating inner domain, will blow their minds. So I would say, even on the service provider space, right? Like, I host like hundreds and probably someday thousands of clusters and sometimes it's workloads that span these clusters. So even in the MSP space, inner domain is everybody wants to do hybrid cloud, right? Like everybody <laughs> wants to do multi-cloud. Like it doesn't matter if you're a two location pizza shop that uses AWS or <laughs> your turner, like you just want all your crap to talk and it's getting harder and harder to do that. So I, I think that's the, the big win. And then on the left security, no, nothing else matters if you don't have security because nobody yeah. wants to be the first person that's on the news with their service <laughs> mesh, like just put everybody's information out on. The, yeah, I mean, inter inter domain isn't even, isn't even actually really doable in anybody else's problem is solved. Yeah. Because yeah. it intrinsically means non-isolation. Uh, and so you've got to be able to, to deal with that. And that's where, I had, that's where the conversations were going on with, um, the, did I, that's the wrong link, sorry, I put the wrong link there. Yeah. You go back to the spec board, you can find the inner domain. That was my screw up. Um, but the, you know, that, that's why I spent so much time talking to the Spiffy Inspire guys um, about security. Um, oh. During NSM connection request closes is the security one, but yeah, there's inner domain. Yeah, but the that's why I spent so much time talking to the Spiffy Inspire guys because it turns out the hard the the good news is the really hard problem for us for security the Spiffy Spire guys are solving, which is how to handle authenticatable identity, um, and then the um, from there we have a little bit of problem around provenance that turns out to be relatively easily solvable and it's in the security spec, um, and then. Um, you know, from there, there will eventually be an authorization policy problem, but I think we can schlub that off on uh, the open policy agent guys for authorization um, because the people are going to have all kinds of opinions about who, uh, who's authorized for what. But if you can secure identity, which is what Spiffy Inspire does for us, and you can get the information about provenance, in other words, who's been involved in getting this from me to you and me, then you're in pretty good shape. So, and, and so if folks would please go look at the inner domain spec again, even if you already have, it's been updated a bit in response to comments. Um, and also go have a look at the security spec. The more eyeballs for security stuff is always better. Um, and the other thing I wanted to mention briefly is I know that there was a gateway spec that Matthew had opened and I need to actually go and put some comments because I think the recent update to the inner domain spec um, actually will cover the gateway thing. But I would want to make sure that Matthew actually concurs there because he often thinks very deep thoughts. Yeah, I, I revised my comment about uh, limited um, versus big versus huge. I think the use case itself is massive. I think the number of people who are going to be 
w willing to implement it is going to be limited, which is good for us because that means we can pretty much work with them once we demonstrate something working and we'll get, uh, and that should be, that should be a, a, an easy driver for us to, to grow the, the enterprise community uh, quite significantly. Um, cool. Is there um, is there any other comments on the uh, on the technology tree? And that, that's a that's a pretty fun area. <laughs> yeah, everyone likes the future, <laughs> even yeah. it being distant, right? <laughs> oh yeah, actually, one of the things that I really love about the technology tree is it reminds me of um, of playing a video game, and it's like you can choose where to where you spend your skill points and um, <laughs> work out which which tree do you want to get first <laughs> and you know and it's the type of game you can get all of them but you have to but that early game you know and your how fast you can level up depends on where you spend those skill points so it's almost like you tell you're telling me that that, that i can't have all the things all at once well you you can we just need to spend well i don't know maybe <laughs> Inner domains the exploit that puts your guild five months ahead of everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, we have ten minutes left. Is there any any pressing topic that we want to go through? Uh, one last thing. So the. Um, the community, uh, uh, the uh, so the patch was merged for the um, um, for the code of conduct. So as of as of today, we are following the code of conduct. Um, and again, if if anyone runs into any issues, you can find us and on the owners.md. And we have our private emails listed there. And you can also read the, um, the actual uh, document from the code of conduct to see where the, um, to see where the mediator is if, if you feel that you're not able to get a resolution from, from us as the maintainers. So uh, thank you all for, for respecting not only the document, but ourselves as well. And, uh, with that, are there any any other last uh, comments before we build back a few minutes of our time? Okay, with that, uh, we will see you. We will see you all on uh, either tomorrow for the documents call or next week at the same time. Actually, that's that's probably a thing because next week me and you are going to be in China. I hope some of the other people here, maybe. So, I don't know, Ed. Tomorrow this meeting cover wraps with another meeting. So maybe we are going to join for half only. So I, I guess what you're saying is because next week you guys are going to literally be on the other side of the world, um, that, that, that you may find this meeting time difficult. Is that what you're saying, Nikolai? Uh, yep. No, that seems perfectly fair. I will definitely be here, and if need be, can pick up the gauntlet. It should be 11 p.m., so I'm hoping to make it if um, if my internet connection and um, 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 allows me to. So. Great. Well, with that, um, I think we've come to the end of our agenda, and we will see you all at the at the same time next week. Enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you guys. Bye.